In your previous program experience, you have probably uh, used variables. Uh, they're kind of a concept that is remarkably helpful in programming where you can give names to values. We don't like to just have random numbers or strings or whatnot floating through our programs. It's useful to give them meaningful names that we can work with. And associated with those variables in statically type, well, actually in all languages, are types of, and Scala being a statically typed language, the variables themselves have types, not just the values that they hold. We've already seen the def keyword and talked about how that is used for making a method. And we had an argument in here of where we had a type on it. I want to go ahead and I want to declare two variables here. There are two different keywords that are used for declaring variables in Scala. So the first and the one that you should use the vast majority of the time is val. So val, let's say, name equals uh, Pat Cook. I'm setting it to be a string literal and name has a type string. And in fact, in Eclipse, if you hover over it, it'll tell you that it has the type string. Because one of the things about Scala values is that they use type inference. So they will look at that line. Now, this is what's called local type inference. They only look at that line, and Scala will try to figure out the type for you and so that you do not have to provide it. You can explicitly provide it. For example, we want this. We know this is a string. So we can tell Scala this is a string. And then if we put something over there that wasn't a string, for example, 42, then we'd get an error message. Whereas if we don't tell it the type and we make that change, at least this line of code will still be perfectly happy. We'll make another variable that happens to have uh, an integer value to it using the val keyword. The second keyword that you can use is var. Um, let's say, so here var age equals 22. Once again, on both value and age, if we want, we can specify a type. Because 22 could convert to a double, I could do that. Notice that if I do not specify that it's a double, because 22 is an int, that's what I get. Uh, so I can specify some other type that uh, that there's basically an implicit conversion to, and, and that's happy. You might notice that Eclipse is telling us something here. The variable name age is in red, and just that color should, you know, is generally meant to indicate there's something bad going on here. As I said earlier, when you choose between val and var, you should generally use val, and that's what Eclipse is telling you here is that vars are generally something that you are not supposed to use too much in Scala. And so the question now is, what's the difference? The difference is the ability to make assignments to these. So I can say age equals 23, and that's perfectly happy. Or I could say age plus equals 1, which would have the same effect, and increment age. Because age is a, is a var declaration, it can be reassigned to point to a different object. That is not true for value. So the val declarations, if I try to do that, I get an error. And so if you're coming, for example, from a Java background, the difference is that a val is a final declaration and the var is what you get all the time. In, in Java, if you're coming from a C or C++, there's a const keyword Basically, vals, I, it's not quite right to say that they are constants. When we get to arrays, you'll see that you can have a val and then still be able to mutate the contents of the object. But when you make a val, it points to an object and it will always point to the same object. You can't reassign uh, and make it reference a different object. With the vars, you can't. Uh, the reason why vals are preferred is it generally simplifies the, the logic. Um, it is, it's easier to think about programs. So what are some of the types that we have? I use string. Most of these were ints. I showed you double. So string was one that's actually in the libraries. Uh, int, 
Note that int starts with a capital I, double starts with a capital D. Single characters have the type care. <clears throat> Booleans for conditionals, true, false, have the type Boolean, again, uh, capitalized. And then there are some other types. There are, we've already seen, for example, unit, which is the type that basically doesn't represent any information. Uh, it turns out there is uh, the open close parentheses next to each other is the expression you use for creating unit and of course a val of type unit this would be a very non-useful variable you can't change it it can't have any other value it carries no information so we won't keep that around there's one other type that we want to talk about here and that is the um, the tuple type. So you can put values inside of parentheses and separate them by commas. And that builds what is called a tuple. So I use the variable name t here for tuple and you can see the inferred type of this is int double string because the three values here are an int, a double, and a string. It's just a simple way for you to make a little object that combines multiple values, has to be a fixed number of values, and they can have different types. When you want to get the values out of that, in some ways, the nice way to do this is using something that's a, this is a, actually building a pattern and doing a pattern match because T is a tuple with three values in it, we can assign it to uh, basically put a tuple over on this side that has the three different variable names and then A, B, and C are all created as variable names. The other way of getting to the values inside of T is using methods called underscore one, underscore two, and underscore three. I'm getting a warning here because I'm not doing anything with this, but for example, if I were to print line that. So this would print the one that is the first element. Note that these underscore methods are one uh, referenced as opposed to most collections in, in programming languages these days. And indeed the uh, arrays and lists in Scala are zero indexed, but the, uh, the tuples actually start at one. And this is for historical reasons. So. That gives you a brief coverage of variables, how you can declare them, and, uh, and the difference between the val and the var, as well as the types that are you know, kind of the low-level types that you'll work with most of the time when you're writing Scala programs.